renovating number five. This week we're going to mix it up a bit and build an outdoor setting. Normally this would retail at two and a half thousand dollars or plus, but we're going to show you how to make them for a fraction of the cost. We start by cutting the wood to length for the back of the bench. Make sure you cut both ends of the wood to ensure the finished ends are square. We are using Specrite hardwood decking planks that have been pre-ordered in Feast and Watson Merbau Timber Oil. They came in a pack of five from Bunnings, which is enough to make two platform lounge backs. Clamp the three upright pieces together and mark along one edge where the centre rail is going to sit. Using a circular saw, cut little grooves between the lines just deep enough of the thickness of the wood. Using a chisel and a mallet, run along the bottom of the cut line and chip out the pieces of wood. Then use the chisel to even out the bottom. With the three pieces of wood firmly clamped together, Cut an angle of one corner. The base of the platform lounge is made out of H4 treated pine sleepers and are 1.8 metres in length, which is great because they're exactly the size of the bench. Using the same technique as before, notch out the wood where the backrest is going to sit. But this time it's a little trickier as it needs to be at an angle, otherwise the back of the chair will be too upright. Hammer the upright backrest pieces into place. The gaps need to be firm, otherwise you won't have stability in the back of the chair. Once you've had the piece of wood at the right height, make sure it's at the correct angle using a bevel. Once the three upright pieces are in place, add the top rail and screw into place. Now we had to use straps to encourage the upright wood to into place. Some would say we might have cut one of the grooves in the wrong place, but we would say the wood was slightly warped. Either way, with a bit of persuasion, we made it fit. Last but no means least, screw the centre back rail into place. We pre-drilled with a countersink drill bit so we could hide the screws later on. the backrest is finished, flip it over onto a bench or two crates and fix the remaining sleepers. We made this bench during a wood shortage, so we're using a temporary support to hold the sleepers together until we can source an appropriate piece of hardwood. We wanted our platform lounge to have steel legs but we couldn't find any the right size, so we adjusted these table legs to make them fit. It worked out cheaper in the long run too, as one table leg made two bench legs. Cut the legs to your appropriate height, make sure to rub down the metal, not only so you don't cut yourself, but so you have a nice level smooth edge. Turn the metal legs on their end and mark the galvanised angle bracket holes onto the tape attached to the leg. We are using 
bolt to attach the bracket to the leg along with a washer. Using multiple sized drill bits we finally get to the correct size hole. Make sure before you tighten the bolts into place that the bracket is in the right position. We use the bench to help us keep the bracket level, however on the other leg you will see that that's not possible. This side of the leg is a little bit more fiddlier as you need to position the washer and nut into place using pliers. With the four legs made up, we gave the bracket a quick spray paint of black paint to match the legs. We also added a felt sticky feet on the bottom to protect our deck and make it easier for the chair to slide. We managed to source some hardwood so we can remove the temporary wood before we fix the legs into place.
We used a couple of extra wood screws to help with stability, but really it's a bit of an overkill as the legs butt up against the supporting piece of wood so it shouldn't move. Just a quick rub down. Now I know you're probably wondering why I'm bothering, but you don't want to sit on a chair and catch your legs on the rough wood. But also, rounding off the corners makes it more like a piece of furniture rather than a bit of builder's hardwood. Don't try making it smooth though, or you'll be there for days. Give the boards a dusting off with a brush, then wipe down with a damp cloth to make sure all the dust residue has been removed before staining. Now we made a bit of a boo-boo. We should have painted the stain on the edges that butted together before we fixed the bench together. It would have saved a lot of poking small gaps with brushes. Give the bench two or three coats depending on where its final destination rests. Ours is under a covered deck, so we're only gonna give it two coats. We used Sickens Filter 7 Stain in Light Oak as we wanted a warm colour. We also filled in all the screw holes in the backrest and gave it all a couple of coatings of stain. Hope you like the finished product. Like, subscribe and share.